ONG on KISS FM. Right now it's 18 minutes past the hour of 11 o'clock and time for a little brief dog spot with our gal Skinner from Dog Emporium. You'll find them on the EM125 at the Porsches Roundabout. Good morning, gal. Good morning, Owen. And of course you've still got our lovely little colleague, Key, who's been undergoing his training. Now he's doing his first obedience certificate, I think, is it next week now? Yes, next weekend he's got his first certificate, so we're all a little nervous on this. Um, he's been practising really, really hard. Um, it's quite interesting, uh, you know, we, we're experiencing things as we're going along with his training, and um, we've realised that dogs obviously don't learn at the same um pace and the same type of learning that people do um so what happens is when you're a child and your mom teaches you how to sit on a chair you know how to sit on a chair pretty much anywhere but a dog doesn't uh once a dog is taught to sit and he knows how to sit in the kitchen when you're standing there with a food bowl or you're standing there with a ball he knows how to sit but he hasn't associated sitting with sitting in faro or sitting on the side of a road or sitting in the middle of an empty field so he has to learn these as you're going along the different exercises in different places yeah and i suppose that you know you've got to be aware of all the various um distractions but you know um i'm i'm hearing tell that people have been following this dog spot canine lovers um what experience you had of that yeah it was really nice um this week we've had some people come in it was uh, an english family um and they came in to say hi to key and to meet him um and he did actually manage to get off his bed and actually <laughs> say hello to them and it's quite nice. I've been following this then um, on the training. Now, you were talking some time ago and um, actually had questions on this. And I know a lot of trainers like your good self use the clicker training method, which originated, did it not, from kiddies toys? Yeah, it originated. It was, it was a toy that was used to click and just make sounds for children. And from that, they developed it into a clicker to be used for training animals. And they use it a lot for dolphins, you know, for large animals, horses elephants where you can't actually put them into the positions that you want them to do and make them do the exercises they have to learn how to do it by associating the sound with the actual behavior that you want um, and what we're going to do I mean most of Key's training has been done by clicker and what we're looking to do on the 22nd of May at se uh, five o'clock sorry at five o'clock um, is to do a clicker demonstration in the shop so that people can come along and just see how it works and for this what we normally do is we actually clicker train Natalie my assistant and um, she gets um, M&Ms or Smarties as we go along and she learns to show people how the clicker works in a dog. Now, do you use the clicker after they've performed the command you've given or before? You don't actually give a command. Um, so what you do is, if you're wanting the dog to sit, you wait until the dog offers the behaviour. The dog sits and at that precise moment is when you click. So you click to mark the behaviour. Right, and say so they, how do they associate that then, using a bit of dog psychology? Well, to start with, they have to understand the clicker. So first what you do is you load the clicker. All you do is take a handful of treats, really tasty things, and you just click and give a treat, click and give a treat, click and give a treat. About five times a day, ten treats per time in different places and then the dog associates that sound with something really good is coming and once they've got that and they're understanding that then when they start to offer the behavior that you want for example to sit or to lift one paw up or to put two feet on a chair or whatever it is that you're wanting to work on at the time then you click in the precise moment that they're offering that behavior and reward them and then they understand or that you can see the little light bulb going on once they get it that that is what you're, they're being rewarded for. Now, you've just mentioned something that's uh, clicked a uh, <laughs> thought process with me. You've just said about giving treats. Well, we've got the summer season looming up very quickly with the visitors, and if they're coming to the house or staying in the house where there are pets, they all want to give them treats and snacks. Now, we're very firm about this with ours. No, please don't give anything to the animals. You know, they've got their routine. What snacks are good and what are bad? 
Well, there's a lot of debate out there on snacks on dogs. Obviously, you need to avoid things that are high in salt and high in fat. So be careful with cheese, obviously, with salted biscuits are a no-no. Um, chocolate and raisins and grapes are definitely no-nos. Um, treats are good. Uh, carrots. Dogs, for some reason, really love raw carrots, most of them. Some of them cooked carrots. Um, cabbage, melon, pears, apples. Uh, sweet potato, raw, even, they like. Or, obviously, natural dog treats. Yeah, natural... Doggy chocks are okay, of course. Yeah, doggy chocks are okay because they're formulated for dogs. Um, we've got a huge range of natural, 100% natural dog treats in, ranging from kangaroo to little milky bars to chicken and rice. There's salmon, there's all kinds of things, and they're 100% totally natural. So, if in doubt, use proper dog treats and don't give them human things. Exactly. Don't give them human things. And be careful of some of the largely co commercialised uh, dog treats because they do have a lot of unnatural things in Chemicals them. Chemicals and things. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Don't start me on that. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to go start preaching. Gail, thank you very much. We wish you luck next weekend, and no doubt you'll be letting us know how Key gets on. But meantime, for anybody listening this morning, if you've got any canine queries, you you can always call Gail. She's with us right now on our landline, 289 587708. Or why not? Just pop along to the shop. You'll find it on the EM125 at Porsches. Or check out their website, all the W's, dogemporium.pt. See you very shortly. Good luck for the weekend, Gail. Thank you, Andy. Right, back to the music. And although uh, Bon Jovi was topping the American charts in 89, we'll all be there for you. We're going to have him living on a prayer instead. Keep it, Kiss. Sunday morning classic hits with ONG.